Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. Uh, today's episode is a continuation of oil painting, so I hope you guys are ready to rock and roll. My name is Emmy Klein, and I will be your host this evening. And uh, today's episode is Jerry's Live 186. Oh, jeez, yep, it's on the on the on the screen. <laughs> 186. I'm losing count, guys. It's awesome. So today's episode is Jerry's Live 186. So if throughout the entire show uh, you are have any questions about the products that we are using, you can go to the website jerrysartorama.com and type in the code in the search bar, the code JL186, and everything that I'm using today will be popped up in a teacher's cart so you can check out all the different things. Uh, we are actually going to be using the same materials that we used last week. And if you missed last week's show, don't feel bad. You can watch it again. Everything is on our uh, Jerry's Artorama Facebook page and YouTube. So everything is archived and you can watch it over and over and over again if you really need to. Totally a-okay. So let's get started. We have a lot of things to do. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Actually, before we get started, let's talk about the contest. We have our ninth annual self-portrait contest happening right now. It is going to end April 18th, 2021, in case you're watching in the future. But it is an annual contest, and we always have contests going on. So if you are interested in finding that information, uh, my, my crew will be putting the links in the chats below. And if you are watching this in the future and you can't find that link, go to the, art, the website again, jerrysartorama.com. And in the top right-hand corner, there is an artist resource tab. If you click that in there, there is a description where all of our contests are located. And it just there's so many things going on. But for this ninth annual self-portrait contest, it is literally a self-portrait. All you have to do is paint your face or draw it or whatever style media that you use because any media is accepted except for photography. That is the one thing that we are not accepting this year. So. With that, no selfies. I don't want to see any portraits where you're actually like taking a picture of yourself like this. As cute as that looks on Instagram, it's not going to be accepted. So please don't give us selfies. Uh, the, but the first price uh, winner is going to receive $2,000. So it's worth just painting a picture of yourself and submitting it. And you know, there are a total of $5,000 in prizes. So you really should get started on that. So. Let's jump right into this process though. Uh, if you did watch the show last week, you saw me actually start these two paintings. <clears throat> this one right here was a basic tonal wash with a, a pencil and charcoal sketch. And I really did this backwards because I wanted to show you guys what would happen if you use the charcoal or pencil first and then went over top of it, over top of it with paint. So, Normally, I would tone the whole thing first and then go over top of it that way, but I just really wanted to show you what would happen. So that was that one. This one right here was where um, I actually started the, the sketch with paint. So if you wanted to watch those two, how I started these two uh, last week, go back and watch the show. So from here, both of these paintings would be done kind of the same way. So I would approach them in the same manner. So I'm not actually going to continue to work on both of these. I'm only going to work on one because we have a limited time. So I think between the two of them, this one has the most resolved drawing. So I'd probably be fighting with this less where this one I did really fast. <laughs> um, as much as I love that Senso canvas, the linen coming through, I just, I know I'm going to, I'm going to take longer to do this one than this. So I'm going to leave that one there. now. This one, surprise, there's another painting behind it. Uh, <laughs> this is the one, if you guys did watch the show, I told you I was going to paint another painting of the coconuts in only black and white. Uh, this is done in the same oils, the, the Lucas, and as you can tell, everything is dry. Um, this was done with the spike oil uh, and the Lucas 1862 oils, so because I did such thin washes, it dried really quickly. This one, I did actually use mediums on just to make sure that it would dry a little faster. So, um, but for the most part, this is just a black and white painting. That's it. So I will show you how to glaze colors on top of this, but we're going to do that at the end. Okay. And if you guys are wondering, my coconut survived. It's still alive. I wouldn't eat it because, you know, it's been cracked open for a week, but you know, it's still good as far as it's still alive. 
Uh, that one's probably edible. So uh, let's jump straight into the materials I'm going to be using. So over here, uh, you can see on the overhead camera, my swatches. So these are the ones that I did uh, last Monday, and they're still just a little bit wet, but I can actually mostly pick them up and show you. They're the ultra mini little canvases where I did a stripe of black, opaque black on them. Uh, and that was actually done with the Turner Acryl Wash, just so I had a solid coverage and um, I wouldn't have to worry about it moving on me because it has that acrylic binder, so it's, it's solid. Then I did the mass tones down here, which is on the bottom of every canvas, and that is straight out of the tube. When you have your paint straight out of the tube. The one right in the middle, as usual, is with the spike oil and it's just a light glaze. So that shows you your undertones. So uh, like this blue right here is more on the kind of the red tones rather than the, the cooler tones. So there's less green inside of this blue and I can see that. Um, then at the top we have our tints, which is essentially just the color mixed with white. And that'll kind of show you all the different things that these paints would really do. So as I showed you before, I am using the 1862. Um, it's the same colors that I used last time. So we have titanium white, which I hope, yeah, you guys can see that, okay. Titanium white, this is the lemon yellow, which is a primary. This is that Lucas red. This is the, I believe, cobalt violet. Yep, that's the cobalt violet. There's the ultramarine, sap green. Uh, this is the burnt sienna. Then I have an ivory black, and then I have my little uh, extra one, which is the blue black, which I kind of threw in there last minute as a, just a fun color. So besides that, I have my normal um, washes that I usually use. This is the uh, brush cleaner, just to kind of make sure that my brushes stay clean. And then I also have my lavender spike oil, which I use um, kind of as a bit of a, a thinner, just to kind of break down my, my oils. It, it does start almost acting like a turpentine, but it's really a media, like a, a medium for your, your oils. Uh, besides that today, I'm going to actually be introducing you to a couple other ones. So these right here are the, the mediums that I'm going to be using mixed in with my oils. So there are so many different mediums that we can use. I'm, I'm not going to jump through all of them because there's just not enough time. But these are pretty basic ones that a lot of people are familiar with and kind of start with. So we have Galkid Light, which is an alkyd medium, so it will speed up your, um, your dry time, so it'll actually dry a lot faster, which is the one that I actually use both of these with my black and white coconut. So this is the liquid original. This will also speed up your dry time, but they work slightly different. This one retains your brush strokes. This one minimizes your brush strokes. So, like I said, there are so many different mediums that really you just need to kind of figure out what works for you and figure out your preference. So if you try to buy these little, you know, this is like, what, 2.5 ounces. It's a little bottle. It's enough to kind of get you started and see whether or not this is going to work for you. Um, this is the 4.2 ounces. So something like this will last you a very long time. Um, so that's those two, the fast drying mediums that I'm going to be using that will thin down your paints. This guy is a fun one. This is uh, the Lucas Painting Butter, which is not actually butter, just in case you guys are wondering. Um, but it does have the consistency of butter, and it, it will actually thicken your paints for an impasto kind of technique. So it will make your paints really... Um, kind of thicker and kind of retain those brush strokes for you. So this is a fun one and it will actually speed up the dry time as well. So um, this is just another one that I kind of wanted to throw in and to kind of show you. Uh, now when I do have mediums like this, I usually put them in these little, oh, these little cups. So I, because I always go through these, I always end up writing the names of whatever media is on or inside of my little um, my little cups here. They have a lid on them that can unscrew. Um, but it also clips straight to your palette. 
which is very convenient and it doesn't move around. So nice and sturdy and it won't go anywhere. Uh, the reason why I definitely would keep the lids on these is because they do have a smell. Um, I believe the Galkid Light is a petroleum base. So if you are worried about smells and toxicity, these are two painting mediums that are probably going to be a bit of an issue for you. An alternative to that is, this is upside down, sorry. It's an oil painting cube. Uh, this is the Chelsea Classical Studios. So this is a sample of, of the, just a little bottle of all of their different mediums that they have. It's just a little one ounce bottle of everything. So they have linseed oil which, uh, and walnut oil. Both of those you can mix into your, your oil paints. It will increase the fat level and we'll go over what that would be useful for. But uh, they will also kind of allow you to glaze with. Then we have a lean medium and a fat medium, which uh, if you remember, fat goes over lean. So uh, <laughs> like I said last time, think of it like my abs. I have some very, very lean abs, but they are coated with a nice smooth layer of fat. <laughs> so my abs don't go on top of my fat, my fat goes on top of my abs. <laughs> so that's <laughs> kind of the best way I've ever, th I've ever thought about it. Um, but we'll, we'll, again, we'll go over kind of how to use those in a little bit. Then we have the lavender spike oil, which is what I use over here, um, just to kind of thin it down. And then a Damar varnish, which is kind of your finisher whenever it comes to at the very end of your paintings. So then we also have a brush cleaner and the, the soap. So these are for cleaning your brushes. So this cube set uh, is really awesome. It's, it's got a lot of bang for your buck, uh, but all kinds of things if you wanted to try them out. This is a really fun way of doing that. So let's get started. And of course, I'm also using my, um, my T10 palette knife to, to mix, my, uh, mix my paints with. If I remember, I'm really bad at remembering to mix paints with this and not my brushes. But like I did last week, um, we are also gonna be using the Mimic Hog, which is a a uh, synthetic version of a natural bristle brush. So it's a little bit softer, uh, but it does actually grab onto your oils and lets you lay them down really nicely. So those are the brushes I'm gonna be using and we got a lot of painting to do, so let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna be using, let's see, let's go with the eight Filbert. Um, so like I said, this entire painting um, is dry. So I'm going to go in, um, typically with oil paints, you wanna work from dark to light. The reason why is because when you go the other direction, it's really hard to darken a very light value. Um, it's not impossible, but it's not the easiest thing. And if you don't wanna fight with your, your oil paints, then this is the way to do it. So uh, we're gonna start with our darks. And like I said, I've only used the burnt sienna on this right, uh, right from the very beginning but we're gonna use some uh, cool tones for our shadows and some warm tones for our lights. And that's because the lights that I have going on in here are a lot warmer, so that will throw uh, my shadows into the cooler temperatures. So let's start with, actually mix with, mix with a palette knife, not my paintbrush. Let's start with a little bit of this um, cobalt violet and we're gonna mix that in with some ultramarine, just for a really fun kind of blue purple going on there. Uh, but I don't want that crazy color, so I'm going to desaturate it with a little bit of burnt sienna, just to kind of introduce, because uh, the burnt sienna is a lot warmer, so when you have a warmer tone mixed in with cooler tones, it's going to desaturate it, but, um, I don't want to lose that darkness, so I'm not going to mix anything uh, lighter into it. So it's still very, very cool, but um, it's definitely uh, a nice dark tone. So uh, I'm going to use liquid and galkid in this painting, um, but for the most part, you probably just want to pick one and stick with it when it comes to an, an oil painting. Um, the galkid light, as you can see, it's very thin. I just dripped a little bit right here on my palette. It kind of moves almost like an oil. So it's got that nice fluid kind of consistency. And you can see right here, 
it's already moving my paints around a lot easier. So it's my, my paints aren't as stiff. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna get some of those cooler tones in the shadows. And at the same time, when I'm glazing like this, the, the glazes that I put on top of my painting is going to darken my values. So I have to be aware of that. This is perfect because I want this to be darker. This is the shadow right here and right here are my darkest values when it comes to uh, looking at my coconuts here. And if you guys wanna see kind of what I'm seeing uh, in reference to my point of view, uh, I did post the, the photo on the Jerry's Live uh, Facebook group. So if you're part of that, you should be able to see it. If you're not part of that, then you can join the group. Uh, all you have to do is answer a question and we should be able to let you in. Um, it, you probably won't be able to get in right this second, but we'll, we'll try our best to get over there. So, let's see. I can tell a couple of things did slightly move where my coconuts were because I, I had to pick this guy up and put him in the fridge. So that's not in the exact same spot that he used to be in. So the shadow is slightly changed. Because I established my drawing in the first go round, I'm not going to fix that. Right now I'm really just kind of looking for those values and kind of the colors that are dancing around in this painting. So I'm gonna leave that where it is. All right. So let's also, while I'm at it, grab, now I have a really thin, there she is. I have a, a size one round brush. And the reason why I'm gonna go for this one right now is because right here on that uh, coconut, right where I cracked the shell, I can see that shell's really dark. So I'm gonna also grab that purple and just kind of touch it in there as well. Now the reason why I want to keep that darkest dark floating throughout the rest of my painting is because if I have my darkest dark only in one spot, my eye is gonna go straight there and it's not gonna kind of float around. If you have trouble with um, kind of seeing the darkest dark in other areas of your painting, that's artistic license, you can totally put them in other areas uh, where it would kind of make sense. Like right here is not that dark. But I'm gonna throw some of that darkest dark up there just so your eye kind of goes around in that kind of a uh, formation. So your eye is gonna float around to those colors. And it's gonna make it seem more cohesive. Right now, I'm gonna try and get this done as quickly as possible. Now, I do need a little bit more Galkid Light because this is a little bit stiff. While you're doing that, yep. we had a question if those Mimic Hog brushes can also be used for acrylics. <clears throat> you can, as long as you have not used them for oil paints first. Um, once you start using your brushes for oil paints, I like to think of them as my oil brushes. They will never go back to uh, my acrylics because they have that oil just in the bristles so once you use them for acrylics you're yeah you're totally fine they, they have that softness to them so you can um, absolutely use them for acrylics um, but yeah just don't don't go back and forth between them all right and there's a bit of a shadow coming down just down the side of that coconut. Doo, doo, doo. And it kind of comes up just a little bit. And I can see the eye of that coconut down here is also very dark. It's probably the color of it, not in shadow, but um, I do just want to kind of put them down there so I can you know, continue to find my drawing there's a couple of little cracks going right over the top of that coconut, right where the little like hairs kind of come over. So that's got the darkest dark in there too. 
which again will keep your eye moving around. So uh, because this area is still in shadow, but it's not as dark as this, I'm going to start lightening it with just a little bit of titanium white. So as you can see, my color here is still pretty violet, but it's not like bam in your face purple. So it's been desaturated a little bit by that burnt sienna. So I can actually desaturate a little bit more to where it's mud technically, but it's really, really pretty mud. All right. So with shadows, the closer an object is to uh, where that shadow starts is usually a lot more uh, crisper. When it's further out towards the outside of the shadow where it's casted further out away from it, it gets blurrier. So that's one of those things that I like to play with. Um, and I usually, whenever I'm painting my, my canvas panels like this, when I can't use the, um, the little bracket to kind of pick it up, uh, just because it's it's a panel and it's it doesn't really work with those very well. Uh, I usually pull it out of that little uh, crevice on my my easel and uh, make sure to get the edges. But that's why I'm moving it around. So I'm just gonna lay down. Now that I got that in, I can put it back in there for for it to be nice and secure. Um, let me grab a little bit more Galkid. So as you can see, it really does move your your oil paints around quite a lot. But it's gonna keep it a nice thin wash. So if I keep this shadow nice and crisp right here and then blur this out a little bit over here, kind of let the two blend together because that purple and this is now wet, I can kind of blend them together. Now, I don't believe we're going to get to the complete final stages of this painting, just because uh, when, you're, when it comes to glazing, you want to do a nice thin wash, like what I'm doing right now, and then you want to let it completely dry. So then you can go back and do another wash on top, but if you were to do, attempt to do another wash before this is fully cured, uh, it's going to start moving and manipulating on you. But the cool thing about the, the liquid or the Galkid light is that it will be dry by tomorrow. So if you wanted to continue this tomorrow and do another wash on top of this, you absolutely could. There we go, we got shadows, right? They look like shadows. Um, now, if I wanted to keep, again, keep that shadow tone kind of going throughout my canvas, because I don't want it to just be in this one spot, I'm going to continue to keep it in my painting elsewhere. So right here where that uh, coconut is starting to turn into shadow, I'm going to hit it with the same color. That's a coconut. It's rough. I'm not worried about my brush strokes too much. I'm just kind of... Um, figuring out where I can just plop in those little purples, right? There's a bit of one shadow right here. Because when I, when I scrubbed out that color, I think I went a little too far down over here. But that's okay. Now, because these are round objects, if you've done a basic drawing class, you should know that there's going to be some kind of a reflective light going up underneath just the bottom of these two. Um, if you haven't done a basic drawing class, I would love to encourage you to do that because that's it's just a foundation class and it would be great for anybody to have that knowledge. Um, but yes, usually with a sphere, there's some kind of a reflective light right here because the light is hitting this table and then bouncing right back and hitting the underside of that. Now, it's not like the highlight where it's going to be that kind of a bright, warm color. It's going to be kind of a cooler shadow. 
So usually that's where I put in like my blues, like a blue shot or a blue highlight, um, just to kind of show you exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, I also have my handy dandy uh, easy wiper here, so I can just wipe off my my palette knife. It's a uh, just attached usually, or I usually have it just sitting in my apron. Um, nice to be able to clean over, clean your uh, paintbrushes and your palette knife really easy. So right here I'm mixing up a nice color, uh, like a really nice, uh, almost like sky blue. So maybe a little bit lighter than that. So that is gonna actually be my reflective light. Now, I don't want it to be this crazy blue, so again, I'm just going to take a little bit of the burnt sienna and kind of desaturate it, just a little bit. That might have been a little too much, but that's, eh, you know, that's okay. I'll, I'll go with it. I'm going to keep it a little bit lighter, though. So now it's almost like a, um, a light gray. I'm going to use the same number one round brush. I just kind of wiped it off on my my, um, my easy wiper here just to get most of that dark purple off of there. Now I also am going to let's close that and use a little bit of the liquid. Now liquid is a little bit thicker than the Gaukid Light, but once you start painting with it, it really thins it down. And it, again, just like the Galkid Light, it moves your pigments around super easy, and you really don't need that much medium. I know it seems like you really do, but you don't. All right, so let's get a little bit of these reflective lights. Now, I might also go back over this uh, area and make sure that the color is correct. I would say it's a little bit browner than that. Um, definitely has a little bit more of a, a burnt sienna tone to it. So if I did that, that's a little bit better. But it's still that nice, cool color going throughout that, you know. And remember, your coconut is a rough surface, so, you know, kind of have it come up, because it's not just going to hit just that one uh, little spot right here. It's going to kind of hit all the little hairs and the little bumps that come out over this, like, area of your coconut. And then I'm going to keep that same color, and again, I'm going to also transition it over here just to make it look consistent. All right, and then my even. So there we go, there's my reflective color. Um, the way that that's gonna look like a very reflective color is once I start putting in those really warm highlights, that will cool that down quite a bit and uh, really push that back as almost like a shadow. Um, so let's continue up here. We're gonna start pulling in the color of the coconut, um, but I do need to clean off my brushes. So let me, actually I'm gonna wipe off most of the paint off my, uh, onto my easy wiper rag. And I'll also close that liquid because I can smell it. but I'm one of the lucky people that the smells of that really does not bother me too much, but it is a uh, toxic type of a thing, so I try to just be very, very aware. And again, if you, if you are worried about that and that's one of those things that does affect you, use the Chelsea Classical Studio Mediums. Those are fantastic for that purpose. Um, Speaking of mediums and things, yes, um, we had someone on YouTube was asking if we could do going back to the wash. Could you do the wash with the lavender spike oil? You can. Uh, that's actually what I did here. So um, the reason why I wouldn't go back in 
right now and using uh, the spike oil is because fat over lean. I need to start adding more fats to this. So I already used uh, a wash of this. So if I were to go back in here and start painting on top using just the spike oil, you absolutely can, but you have to use less spike oil. So your fat content gets a higher level, if that makes any sense. So you're not taking out as much of the oils from your pigments. I've done that before and it works beautifully. But I wanted to show you other mediums, you know? <laughs> All right, now let's start using... Wait, um, while you're still on the medium, yeah, go ahead. They, um, I guess some people are kind of like, they're, they're all, minus the painting butter, kind of at base, very similar. It just is down to personal preference between those threes. Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, that's between the uh, liquid, or liquid original, because liquid, there's just so many. There's liquid fine detail. There's liquid, uh, I believe it's extra fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they, liquid comes in different, uh, I guess, grades. And I love the liquid fine detail. It's really beautiful. But again, it's a toxicity thing. Uh, so I usually use the Chelsea Classical Studio Mediums. Uh, but it's all personal preference. So Galkid. I, I like to think of it like Galkid Light works almost, it feels like an oil. It has that same consistency like a linseed oil. Uh, liquid is weird. <laughs> it, it looks really thick and gloopy, but then when you start painting with it, it's super like slippy. just creamy and slip. Yeah, slippy is a really good word. It just, it moves really very consistent though if that makes sense. But it's it's not really like an oil like the Galkit like mm -hmm. is. It's it's a really hard thing to explain, but I would suggest you guys try it. Um, just just to try to see kind of how how you feel about it, you know? We sell tiny bottles. We do sell tiny bottles. That's why I said uh, this is only a 2.5 ounce bottle and it's really not that bad as far as the price point. So over here, I have burnt sienna, and I started mixing in my uh, lemon yellow, so it's a really warm, kind of earthy tone. And then I'm going to use the liquid, just to kind of show you. So as you can see, it's just moving my, my pigments around just so much, and it's, it's really nice consistency but it's, it's definitely a strange medium. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do, this entire area over here, I'm gonna coat with that kind of burnt sienna, lemon yellow color. Because remember, I can pull this lighter, but it's harder to go darker. And I do not want, even in my coconut down here, I do not want a pure white, except for on my brightest, brightest highlights. So, for instance, if you wanted to see it in black and white, I only have a pure white right here. There is a touch right here, tiniest touch right here, and then over here. That is the only spot on here that is actually pure white. So, uh, Try not to just, it's like um, anybody who is familiar with makeup, don't kind of, I, I guess, uh, what's the, the highlighter, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't highlight your whole painting. They're, my teacher called them pings. You, you want just a couple of pings here and there with your brightest whites. So if you have too many highlights, your eye just doesn't know what to do. And it's like ping, 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 and you, you don't know where to rest. You still need areas where your eye can rest. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> this little dude is such a funny shape. All right. And that is also coconut. The, the coconut husk, not rest of that. All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of the white. Now, over here on this side of the coconut, I I don't know why, but I feel like I'm picking up some greens. 
which why not? We're gonna throw in a little bit of green there. So I'm gonna take some of that, uh, that sap green, mixed in with this color. And you know what, let's do a little bit of the Galkid light right now. I probably still have the liquid on my brush just because I already mixed it in, but why not? So remember, green is technically a cool color, so it can be in the shadows. But I mean, if you're seeing green, paint green, you know? It's, a, it's an organic material. You can absolutely throw in some funky colors. I feel like it's even greener than that. Let's do that. Why not? Remember, I'm not going to just keep green right here. I'm going to move it throughout the rest of my painting so it doesn't look funny. Like a just weird moldy spot on my, on my coconut. It's going to look like it's intentional. Maybe a little bit over here. Why not? Let's start and go into the underlight there. All right, so let's start using this guy. Getting the real color of the coconut, which is not quite uh, white with burnt sienna. And again, I'm, paint I'm mixing with the paintbrush again. The world's worst. I just, I always forget that there's a palette knife there. I think it's probably just because my brain's moving a little too fast for my hands to keep up. How are we looking on time anyway? Got about just over 20 minutes left. Cheese and rice. It's really, it really moves by quick, I swear. All right, so uh, let's, let's actually, oh, I wanted to show you the painting butter. Let me show you the painting butter. Now the reason why you might use the painting butter is because, especially with this painting, uh, you can really get that texture of the coconut using this guy. So let me squeeze a little bit out here. Oh, so it is, it, again, it has that um, almost turpentine kind of a smell to it. So if that does bother you, uh, be aware that that's going to be there. Um, you don't need much. I probably squeezed out too much on my palette here, but like it still kind of makes your paints move around a little bit looser, but it definitely does not uh, thin it down like the liquid. So there's my coconut texture. Why not? So the cool thing is um, oil paints don't really completely restrict when they um, dry. They do move, granted. That's, that's one reason why you want to follow the fat over lean uh, method is because if you were to lay down a nice thick fat layer uh, of oil paints and then it, it becomes surface dry and then you paint a really thin wash of like say you use the spike oil and you do a really thin uh, glaze on top of it that thin glaze is now sealing in that um, really fatty layer so the fatty layer is still kind of shifting just a little bit while it's drying because oils dry by oxidation so it's it's having a hard time drying because you've sealed it in but as it's drying it's going to start cracking that top layer so it's, it's a little bit of a, a pain in the you-know-what to deal with, and I wouldn't suggest doing it. Or, hey, you know what, maybe you should, because then you can experience what happens when you do it. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only instructor that's like, do the wrong thing, just so you can really experience it. All right. Speaking of, mm -hmm. lots of questions about using these mediums with water mixable oils. Ah, water mixable. Um, that is a really good question because water mixable oils are water mixable because of the binders in them. When you start mixing in non-water soluble things with those water soluble oils, you're now pretty much turning them into just a traditional oil. 
you're, you're almost canceling out that binder that makes it water soluble. Uh, Cause these mediums are not water soluble. Easy fix is to use a water soluble medium. Uh, Lucas actually makes a water soluble linseed oil, I believe. Do they have, I know they have a fast drying um, medium as well. So if you want it to dry fast, uh, but, cause I don't think the linseed oil dries fast. Cause it's, it's, a, it's an oil, it's gonna dry slower. Um, that's when you mix in any kind of a linseed oil, it slows your drying time because you're adding more fats to it that need to dry via oxidation. So if you want to mix these in, you can just use very small amounts. I would say maybe 20%. I wouldn't exceed 20%. Um, so you can use these, but if you want to do a glaze with the water soluble, I would just stick with the linseed oil and let them fully cure, which is gonna take a little bit longer, but um, you can also use water because it's a water soluble oil. Just use that like your, uh, your mediums here. But remember, fatter layers go on top. So use less oil as you're getting to the thicker layers, if that makes sense. I hope it does. All right, now, so I'm just gonna kinda touch that in here and there. Coconuts. Um, now, here's the deal. I need to clean all that painting butter off my brush before I continue on, because that painting butter will affect the rest of the paints if I don't get that off of there. Um, this would seem really, really warm if I cool down the background. So let's, let's do that real quick. I'm trying to do this really fast because we are starting to run out of time. And you know what? I'm just going to start making some mud. This is, I tend to do this. I find colors that I've mixed before and I start mixing in other colors and kind of making a new color based off of that old color. And it, um, it makes it look kind of consistent and keeps your colors kind of flowing together. But uh, it starts making mud, so be very aware of what you're mixing together. Um, so... Uh, the other reason why I actually did want to start working on this painting in particular is because I wanted to show you, because you guys were asking, uh, how does the charcoal and the pencil be affect, like how are they affected as you continue going through it? Because I put that one wash layer down, it's no longer moving around. Like this opaque layer of the uh, kind of a desaturated bluish gray is now laying on top of it and I can completely erase what I was doing. So um, just that first wash layer is really where you have to kind of be aware and careful. So let's do a little bit of liquid just to kind of get this moving. And I'm almost going to be carving out the shape of my coconut. Now it's organic. I'm not even looking at that. That's not great. I would not recommend it. Um, but because my drawing was already there and it kind of already established, I'm not even paying attention to it because I'm also running out of time. But. I'm gonna kind of blur out the edge of the shadow as well. But now you can see my coconut looks a lot warmer now that the background has been cooled down. Oops, and I need to get it back in that little groove there. I'm not even gonna worry about that all the way. Like I said, real quick. This is a lot messier than I would normally be painting. Um, but I just want to kind of quickly show you how to do that. Now, this color right here, I might also use on the inside of my coconut. Because a white object is not white. The shadows are cool. The highlights are warm. So... Your highlights on this coconut should, especially on the, the inside, the, the white part, should look more of um, like a yellow until they get to that super bright highlight where it's gonna look white. Now this, I might also 
pull in a little bit. Ooh, there's purple right here. Perfect. If I use a little bit of the purple that I had on my thing, I can also give a little bit of variations. So like the purple would be a little bit more of a shadow where that like lighter blue color um, would be kind of the, the lighter version of the shadow that's inside the coconut. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I realize when I watch these videos back, I'm always like, that's not what I meant to say. <laughs> so I hope that makes sense. All right, so I am gonna kind of cool, uh, lighten it up just a little bit with a little bit more white, but again, it's not pure white. It's still a color. Because the inside of this coconut is bumpy. So I wanna kinda hint at those funky textures. Um, now, I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna keep it still that same tone, but I'm gonna use it a little bit lighter over here. Cause this is where that, the edge of that coconut is kind of sitting. Now, I wanted to show you specifically the color of this coconut. That's why I'm trying to block it in really fast. Alright, um, there's a little bit of purple and ultramarine mixed with this, um, this mixture right here to kind of hint at a shadow. Now, I'm not completely taking out all of that underpainting. I'm gonna let it kind of sparkle through just because it was, it's a beautiful burnt, um, burnt sienna color. And I like that color, especially with the, the cools kind of popping forward. All right. Now with the highlights, let me kind of show you what I meant by your highlights are warm. Here's a really fun, really light yellow, right? Put that over there, and I'm just gonna grab another brush just because I don't wanna worry about cleaning that one because we are running out of time. So a little bit of Galaxy Light just to get my paints moving, the pigments moving around. All right, so let's start putting in some of the highlights where the light's hitting it. So because it's a really bright yellow, it next to this blue kind of a tingy gray looks white. Looks like a white object. But clearly, I mean, you can see on here, it's not white. That's my white. This is a, this is definitely a yellow. So right here, the coconut starts kind of going into that shadow, which I don't want a harsh line. Although you could do a harsh line if you wanted to. But this is where, because this is still wet, my warm colors are starting to mix in with my cool colors. And it's, again, it's technically making mud, but it's a nice, pretty mud. <laughs> um, so just to kind of show you how to play around with your highlights, I'm going to take a pure white. Now, when I do my highlights, I do not mix in any medium. I usually keep them, and they're usually at the very, very, very end of my painting. I don't do them at this stage usually. I'm just kind of trying to show you how the difference of what it would look like here. Um, but I, when I do my final highlights, it's always the last step, although I am notorious for going back in and working like shadow parts or something. But um, 
I use pure white paint and I usually do not mix anything in it. It's just a pure paint. Now, if you need to mix in like a fatty medium with it, you can. Especially if you've already used like a, a pure paint uh, and you're trying to go uh, paint on top of paint. That's not mixed. Uh, okay, so it's the fat over lean thing that I'm trying to explain. If you use uh, a ton of layers and at this point you are just mixing paints together and just laying them down without any other medium, you do need to add a fatter medium to it, which again, that Chelsea Classical Studio has a fat medium, or you can also add linseed oil. So it would stick. All right. So as you can see, that's my highlight and it is pure white. So that's where I would usually touch in um, just little, little spots here and there. Like maybe right here. That was a little bit more than I wanted to, but. Quick question while you're doing that. Yep. Um, do you have a color shift in these like you would in say watercolors or anything like that? No, like that is the really cool thing about oils. Um, Although I will explain, I guess, how color shift can happen in oils. Um, and that's actually what I wanted to show you right after I was done with that. <laughs> um, because as you're drying, or as your, your painting is drying, it's only the uh, oxidation of the oils where the, the oil is now uh, just reacting with the air and it's just drying that way, but it doesn't shift your colors at all, like acrylics would. Now, where the oil shift kind of comes, um, let me, uh, let me leave that right there so I can show you, I guess. I grabbed an old painting. So uh, this right here is an oil painting I did. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to make sure it's on camera. Uh, an oil painting I did, oh, I honestly don't know how long ago. It's been a minute, um, but it has dried completely. Yeah, um, it has dried completely and um, it has some shiny areas. I don't know if you can see that. We'll put it over top of the palette. Oh yeah, let me put, put it over here so you guys can see. There we go, that's better. Um, so you can see like there are, if I tilt it, you might be able to see it a little bit better. It seems really dark, there we go. You can see the shiny areas. The shiny areas are where it still has a nice oil content. The matte areas are where it has lost that luster, that oil. So um, when you are going back to work on a painting, like if I wanted to work on this again, you need to do what's called oiling out. So what that means, and I can actually show you real quick here. Let's put it back on the palette so you guys can see. Let me drop my coconut painting down. So when, when I'm talking about oiling out, I'm talking about adding a layer of oil on top of this. So let me grab in here the linseed oil. Ooh. All right, now I'm not gonna actually lay this down on my palette. I'm literally just going to dip a brush, which I would not recommend. Ooh, that is stuck on there sealed so it will not leak which is beautiful all right so i'm going to take uh, a nice clean brush don't don't dip it into your bottle but i'm going to do that just because i want to save some time here um so i'm just getting a really thin layer of oil and i'm going to lay it down on my painting now the reason why i'm doing this is because when your painting dries and it loses that oil and it's it's technically called underbound um, the, sh the values of that paint is going to be very difficult for me to see um, because that oil la layer with the different shiny layers it's just the, the values aren't easy to tell when you've just lost that luster so when you do oil out let me close this before I spill it um, you want to put a layer of oil on it, let it sit for five minutes, and then just take a nice clean rag and wipe it back off. Um, now, I'm not scrubbing. I'm not really removing a ton. I'm just going to take 
just a little bit off. So um, that will allow me to work back into this area only. So if I only want to oil out a little bit, I can. If I want to oil out the whole thing, I absolutely can. I'm one of those people that I work all over the painting, so I would probably oil out the whole thing. Um, but that will let me see the color value. Um, and now you can see there's also a nice shine on her painting or on her face. But let's see if there's a, a color difference. I hope you can see that on the, the palette, if you can. Oop, I'm trying to get that glare off. I, I, I don't know if it's picking it up, but like I can tell that like especially right here, uh, the values of like there's more red in there that I could see earlier. So the values of her cheek and kind of where I had put that oil in are a lot easier for me to see now that it has that layer of oil in there. So it's just adding a nice layer of fat just to kind of almost re-wet the oils, but it's not re-wetting it because the oils are dry and they're not going to move around. I mean, clearly I'm wiping a rag on it and it's not doing anything, but it would allow me to work back into this painting. Now, speaking of working back into a painting, I wanted to show you this method as well, because this is a very traditional uh, method that the old masters used to do. It's actually called grisaille. Uh, I think I forgot to mention that last week. So the cool thing with this uh, is that you can do the entire painting with one, one paint, black and white, um, or even like a burnt sienna, and you can find all your values and things like that. Um, the reason why the old masters used to do that is because paints are expensive. If you use a burnt sienna or like an earth tone, it was very easily found and they could just do the whole painting, not worry about color shifting or anything like that, like uh, the, the different tones of color, like the warm or the cool or anything like that. But they could build the whole painting and then glaze the colors on top, which is what I'm about to show you. So I have essentially established the entire painting, but I want to show you how to kind of put some colors uh, onto these coconuts in very thin washes. So let me, I'm probably just going to use what I already have on the palette just to kind of show you. I'm going to again use Galkid Light. So you can now see I'm adding just color to my painting. Now, when you do these, uh, the, the glazes, uh, be aware that your glazes are going to affect the tone. So um, whether or not it's uh, got a lot more titanium white in there or if it's a darker shade, it is going to affect the value of the color of whatever it is that you see. But if you keep them really thin, it's one of those things that you should be able to control fairly easy. And it's a really easy way to kind of just tiptoe into oil paints as far as the, um, the techniques concerned. So I've added just a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna with titanium white. I think there's even just a touch of yellow still mixed in there. Uh, and it makes it look a lot warmer. So if you wanted to, you can just keep going over here. Again, I probably need to add a little bit more fats to this just because like right here, I know I added a lot of white um, and it's probably a pretty fatty layer. Now I did want to also explain um, the Chelsea Classical Studio mediums just because there's been a lot of questions as far as what order you use them in. <laughs> um, so the first one that you would use is the spike oil. Um, this is what I used for that first wash uh, on my both my paintings when I first started. So this spike oil is the very first thing where it's it kind of acts like a turpentine, so it starts breaking down the oils of your, your paints. So uh, it's going to really take the fattiness out of it. And then I'm going to bring my, my cube over here. Um, so lavender spike oil, it would be your first step. Um, once you build up that layer, 
then I would switch to the lean medium. So it's still taking some of the oil content out of your paints, but not as much as the lavender spike oil because the lean medium is actually a combination of the spike oil with linseed oil. Uh, so it's, it's a combination of those two things. So that's already mixed for you and you don't even have to worry about the ratios or trying to figure out what you're, you're mixing together, which you are more than welcome to make your own lean medium, but um, you have to figure out kind of the ratios of what works best for you. So once you switch from the spike oil to lean medium, then you would go to the oils. So uh, you could, if you wanted to, in between those two stages, just paint with like straight paint out of the tube. So I wouldn't break it down with any kind of a medium at all because there is still a good fat content in there. But when you start mixing in linseed oil or walnut oil, um, those two are, it's adding fat content. So the main difference between these two, just so you're aware, linseed oil is the, the base standard. Like you, it's, it's a very used oil. Uh, walnut oil is becoming more and more popular because it's less yellow. Um, so it actually is a little bit lighter than the linseed oil. Um, although this right here is an extra pale linseed oil, so it's been sun bleached. Um, it actually, uh, I know Brandon who makes this, he actually sticks all of the bottles in the window and they are literally brightened up by the sun. It's incredible to watch. Um, but we do it on yours too. We've done it here when they've been in the Yes! <laughs> when, it, when, he, when your linseed oil gets a little too dark, just stick it in the window and it will brighten right back up, which is awesome. But the walnut oil is actually lighter than the linseed oil just as a base when it starts. But the only difference between these two that might affect your painting is that walnut oil takes longer to dry. So you just need to be aware of that fact. If you use walnut oil instead of linseed, you're going to take a little bit longer to dry. Um, once you get through those two, you would then switch over to the fat medium. So the fat medium is fattier content than your oils. So once you get to that, you should be in your final stages. You don't want to continue to do um, painting on top of your fat mediums. It's just that would be a lot of fat content. Uh, and I think at that point, if you've gone through, I don't even know how many layers that would be. That's just, that's a lot of layers. And I feel like you would resolve a painting by then. At least I hope you would. And that you can use that. <laughs> with the, the glazing techniques where you go on yes. to each one of those steps. Yes, uh, you honestly, I, when I'm glazing with any of these mediums, I don't even go a 50-50 ratio. Like a little bit of medium really does go a long way. So these are one ounce bottles. They last you a really long time. So, um, I mean, I usually just take a little dip from my brush and then mix it into my paints as I, you, I was showing you right here. Um, it doesn't take a whole lot, but uh, then of course you got the the uh, Demar varnish. That's it. So this right here, uh, the Demar varnish, is like your final coat. So that would keep your painting like the the portrait that I did, where it had the different tones, where some of it was shiny with that oil content and some of it wasn't. It would alleviate that problem because it would give it a nice even coating, and you would no longer have those different shades you just couldn't tell it would it would give that luminosity back to it so the the cool thing with glazing uh is because you are suspending your pigments in a medium it's optically mixing which is really really cool so if you were to take um they're called jellies uh, we use them here in the studio it's just a thin transparent piece of plastic if you were to take a red and put it on top of a blue you would see purple through it that's optically mixing so if i were to leave this um this is this is optically mixing so i just put a very light layer of a warm brown over top of this and now it looks warmer uh that's an optical mix but the cool thing is when you are optically mixing like that you're adding layers so if you've ever seen those resin paintings where you actually have like one layer of painting then they do a layer of resin or even glass and then they do another layer of the painting and then it once it it's done and they move it around it almost looks three-dimensional that's essentially what you're doing with your glazing laser layers um, it's just thin really really thin so you're not going to get that crazy movement like you would with resin because the, the layers of resin are like this thick 
But this is the same concept, just in a very thin kind of a manner. So how are we doing on time, by the way? We've got five minutes over, but you can go a few minutes longer. Okay. More. Are there any questions? I mean, I could, I could sit here and paint forever. Um, I wish I had gotten further into this one, but we're running out of time. It's okay, because now they want you to do a water mixable oil episode as well. Oh, okay. Water mixable. Water mixable oils act exactly like regular oils. They're just mixed with water. Um, I mean, it's, it's a very similar concept. You do the same thing, only it's just m how much water you mix into your oils. Or your, your, yeah, your oil paints. Um, and then at the very end, I would probably use the linseed oil instead of water because water would be acting like your turpentine or your spike oil uh, and breaking down that bond. But then the linseed oil that is water mixable, you have to make sure you get the right one. Uh, it's the Lucas Berlin is what you're looking for. Um, that would be the one that you would mix in for more of an oil fatty content, if that makes sense. But hey, if you guys want to see an oil like a, a water mixable oil episode, I will be happy to do that. I get to paint for you guys, it's awesome. So I think that's about it, guys. I, I had a ton of fun. I, I really wish I could get all of these paintings done for you, but we only have a limited time. Um, but if you guys have any ideas for other episodes that you wanna see, please put it in the comments below. I love to know your thoughts. And this is how I'm just gonna keep building all the different classes that I bring to you guys. But um, if you also like this, hit the like button or the, the thumbs up or send happy faces if you're on YouTube or Facebook or however this whole social media shenanigans work, you know? But the more you guys hit that, the more this video is shared with other artists. You can also share them with your friends who are artists and spread the knowledge of painting, which is so much fun. Um, but that is everything I think for me. Again, if you want to see the, the products that I used here, go to jerryzardorama.com. In the search bar, type in the code JL186. It's right here on the screen. You can see it. I actually just double checked. Uh, but if you actually do any kind of painting where it's you know coconuts, I've posted the reference photo that I did. If you guys want to try this, please tag me. I want to see it. Uh, on Facebook, there is the Jerry's Life Facebook group, which is a community of artists, and we get together and we support each other and we ask questions and, and say, hey, I, I just recently someone posted about they were drawing a, or doing a painting of a boat and they were like, I'm not sure about the angle of this boat, any suggestions? And everybody was commenting and being like, I love it, maybe we should try this. And it's just, it's a huge community of artists just getting together to talk about art and support each other. So if you do wanna join, you do have to answer one question it's very easy. It's just what do you want to see on the live shows? But it's just to make sure that we don't have like robots. Although I like robots and I think they should join. If you know a robot, tell them to answer the question. <laughs> uh, but other than uh, that on Facebook, we also have my own personal host page, which is under the name Emmy, host of Jerry's Live. Makes sense. Uh, and then on Instagram, if you want to tag my own uh, art page, it's misscakes.art. And then also tag Jerry's Artorama. Now, I know there's a lot of different Jerry's Artorama accounts, like Jerry's Artorama in Nashville or uh, you know Newark, Delaware. It's just the one that says just Jerry. Uh, it's Jerry's Artorama. So that's the one that we're looking for. And then tag in the code JL186 so I can find it and search it. So that was oil painting, uh, glazing, and more advanced techniques. I hope you guys had fun. And be sure to join me next week because I'm gonna be going over all things gouache. What is gouache and all the different things that come with it and what we have to offer. And it's pronounced gouache. Gouache, I'm gonna say it again. Um, but I hope you guys had fun. Thank you for joining me, bye!